Aloha, Meli Kaliki Maka. I hope that you had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, yesterday, Pastor Dave and I had such a wonderful time spending it with his family. And we are just so glad that you could join us here today. If it's your first time, welcome. Merry Christmas. Glad you could be here. And it's always just so wonderful to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And it's just so amazing how his life has impacted so many people and lives. Today we're going to be talking about how to rest in the storms. And we see that there's a lot of storms going on, right? From COVID numbers going up, going down, going up. It's almost like a roller coaster, right? And and we also see physical storms. We've had a storm here in Hawaii several weeks ago, right? That was the first time I seen Waikiki flooded like that. And um there was tornadoes in Kentucky and parts of the mainland in the Philippines around the world that there's storms around us that are going on and we're going to talk about how to rest in the storms and as a child of God the good news is that God has already made a special rest for the people of God it says in Hebrews 4 verses 9 and 10 I'm reading, reading from the NIV it says there remains then a Sabbath, meaning ceasing from work, rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus and his life. Thank you for sending him to us and just um, how his life, how your life, Jesus, has impacted my life. I'm forever grateful and so thankful. And this is truly a reason to celebrate. So we thank you so much for becoming like one of us, um, empathizing with our weaknesses and our frailties, but yet giving us hope, hope for eternity. And so we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's just cut to the chase and get right to the point. The struggle is that we are, there's things in our life that is trying to steal our rest and peace that God has given us, right? Can I get a witness on that? You know, whether it's je jealousy from what other people have, that focusing on things that we don't have, maybe it's offense, you know, uh, offense from family members, coworkers, um, Things happening, you know, in society, you know, and, and we get offended and maybe we're harboring unforgiveness. Maybe it's a religious mindset that we have that we beat up ourselves. We put these false expectations on ourselves and we are just on this rat race, you know, the hamster on the wheel that it's like, oh my gosh, I got to be this good person. I got to look like this. I got to act like this. Um, or maybe it's fear, right? We turn on the the news and okay, what are the what are the levels right now, right? And this can cause fear to interrupt our peace. Well, what about false identity? I kind of touched on that a little bit, right? So maybe we have this false identity that we're trying to be so hard to be a certain way, a certain person that God never intended us to be maybe we're also battling illness that 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 can easily steal your peace if you're in pain if you're not feeling good it's very easy to let that steal our rest right or maybe we're battling with addiction you know maybe there's things that that has happened in our past that have caused a lot of pain and we just escaped to addiction well i have good for you, good news for you today because of what jesus has done we don't have to pay for the penalty for our sin we don't have to punish ourselves because we're not this way or that way because of our sins we don't have to strive and hustle to earn being in God's presence in his being accepted by him. We don't have to read 10 chapters of the Bible to be oh, kind of a good Christian. You know, maybe some of us can't rest because we're jealous of others, right? Maybe we can't rest because someone has offended us. Those things that I just talked about, right? Some of us may be just so, so tired. And I feel like that is on the heart of God today. He sees you, dear beloved one, that you are tired and he's saying I have come so that you can have rest and because of what Jesus has done we can 
rest. We can take a day off because our financial provision is not all on us. When we look at the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, there was no one out there throwing out the bird seed, right? There's no one there with a gigantic water hose uh, watering all the trees and the plants on the mountains, right? God is taking care of them, right? He's taking care of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. But you, my child, are much more valuable, much more precious than these things. And God desires to take care of you. And you know what? God loves you, not because of what you do, but he loves you because that is who he is. He is a loving God. There's nothing more that you can do to make him love you more than he does right now. Some of us are working so hard to prove ourselves when God is already saying, you're already good. You know what? In fact, you're very good. And some of us are striving so hard that because we don't know if God will take care of us or all of our needs. But the Bible says that if God sent Jesus, now think about this. If God sent Jesus, his one and only son, his precious beloved son, if he gave him up for us, how much more will he give us everything that we need? Amen. If he gave us Jesus, why would he withhold anything else from us? This is who he is. This is our God. And maybe we're battling illness and I get it. It sucks. You know, I've battled illness too for several months. My mother, she battled um, stomach cancer. My dad, he battled diabetes as well as um, heart failure, kidney failure, you know, um, which brought on some other health issues as well. I mean, it, it sucks, you know, Pastor Dave, he's uh, battling back issues, right? Or maybe even a migraine, right? It sucks. It's, it's, it's a total distraction. You can't do the, you know, it's hard to do the will of God and be who God called you to be when you have some pain and things going on. I get it. I understand. You know, I, I was bitten by a centipede while I was sleeping in bed. Um, you know, I had my appendix taken out and, you know, I was told like, you're going to die unless you have this surgery and take out your appendix. And I battled allergies. So I, I totally understand. Like it, it sucks. I mean, it, it's horrible. It's horrible whenever there's health issues that we're battling. But again, let's come back to the truth, which is the word of God that because of what Jesus has done, he has overcome sin and death and sickness and all of these things so that we could have peace and rest with him. And so we must know that these several things, and I just feel like I need to say, share it again and again, you know, that sickness does not come from God because God is life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And in him, there is no sickness. There is no darkness. He does not give you sickness to teach you a lesson. You know, he might allow certain things, but he never does it with the intention to teach us a lesson you know what because if that was his intention then i think we would all be sick because i think we ha all have so much that we can learn right and um he wants to heal us it is the will of god to heal us and um he also wants to reveal to us resources because as we've seen in the bible he also uses resources to bring healing so even i just want to share a quick testimony just a few weeks ago uh, my friend's brother and his wife went traveling on vacation and they they were battling covid and uh it was a horrible situation because they weren't you know in their own city so um, they had to go to the nearest hospital because her her, uh, her brother, my friend's brother, couldn't breathe. And his health um, took a really bad turn where he couldn't talk, he couldn't walk, he couldn't breathe. He was he needed assistance with his breathing. And that he was battling that for about a month. And I want to say last week, I think it was last week, it might have been uh, two weeks ago, that one day he got up because they considered him in a coma. That's how bad he was. And just one day he woke up, he told the doctors, take off this ventilator, you know, and they checked him out and he was 100% well and he was <laughs> um, discharged from the hospital. Praise the Lord. Well, come to find out um, when his sister, um, when my friends uh, uh, talked to her brother-in-law, he said that, you know, while he was in a coma that he's been battling that there are demons just trying to kill him. And he said he felt the prayers of people. And then just one day the, the demons left and he woke up 
and he was well and i was like i was like wow you know that was a spiritual battle right that was a spiritual storm that he was going through and so just know that your prayers are very powerful our faith in god is very powerful so what whatever you're going through right now keep your faith in god keep your faith in god keep your hope in god and because Jesus has conquered sin, sickness, and death, and it has no power over us. We're not slaves to the, them anymore. They need to bow to the name of Jesus. So truth number one that I want to share with you today is that we have been set free. We've been set free from the law of sin and death and sickness. And this reminds me of Mark 4, 35 to 39, when Jesus and the disciples are in the storm. And while they're in the boat, in Galilee, right? And Jesus, I love how Mark describes it there that Jesus is napping there with a pillow. He had to include with a pillow because that must have looked really interesting being in a storm and Jesus is napping on the pillow in the boat while it's rocking and there's winds and there's waves, right? And then the disciples wake him up and they're like, you know, don't you even care that we're going to perish? And Jesus gets up and he rebukes the wind and the waves. And they're just like, oh, they were just so amazed that the wind and the waves obey him. Well, can you relate with the disciples? I, I can relate with them. I've been in that position where it's like, mayday, mayday, God, don't you see what's happening? Don't you care? Are you hearing my prayers? Are, are you paying attention or are you taking a nap? Right. Do you do? You, can you relate to that? Because I, I sure can. And in that same passage, though, I noticed that I forgot that in verse 35, it says that it was Jesus that said, let us go to the other to the other side. He invited the disciples to go to the other side of Galilee, the other side of the lake. And it was his idea to go to the other side. And if it was his his idea to go to the other side, he will be faithful to complete the good work to get us to the other side. Can I get an amen? So if he if it was his idea, if he says that we're going to go to the other side, we are going to go to the other side. No matter what storm we face, no matter what comes our way, he's going to get us to the other side. Can I get an amen, right? And Jesus is a beautiful bridge between heaven and earth. I just love this, right? When this picture of God in the flesh right? He can understand. He's 100% God, but yet he understands our frailty, our weaknesses, and he is a bridge between heaven and earth. He exudes heaven here on earth, right? And it's his, his life is an example to us as to how we can live, right? Being born of the Spirit of God, but yet living here on earth. Jesus had an eternal, an internal I guess eternal too, eternal, internal peace that was not of this world. It was a kingdom peace. It was a peace from another realm. It was not a peace of this world because the peace of this world is only temporary. But the peace of God shall surpass all understanding to guard our hearts and our minds. It's a supernatural peace. It's a peace that will protect us, that will give us rest in the midst of a storm. And this is why Jesus could sleep in the midst of the storm while the boat was rocking, the winds were blowing, and the waves were crashing in the boat. And he offers the same peace to you and I. It says in John 14, Jesus says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So truth number two is, let Jesus teach you. Let Jesus teach you. Have a teachable heart. There's so much we can learn when we don't have pride and say, I, I know, I know what to do. I know, I can do it myself. Who's guilty of that? <laughs> you know, can I put 10 arms up? I've been guilty of that many times. And Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. 
we see in Numbers 10, 33, that the presence of the Lord, you know, the cloud by day and the fire by night that led the Israelites, the cloud by day would lead God's people looking for a place for them to rest. And that's the same today, that God is wanting to lead us to a place of rest because he sees you, my child, that you've been tired, that you've been fighting really hard, and he wants to give you rest. God is always leading us because he understands our physical lim limitations and he can empathize with that. Jesus can empathize with that because he was here in the flesh. And um, let's take a look even at Noah in the Bible, right? Look at his name, Noah. It says in Genesis 5:29, he, referring to Lamech, Noah's father, named him Noah, saying, this one shall bring us rest and comfort from our work and from the dreadful toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord cursed. So God told Abraham to, if you're not familiar with the story, God told Abraham to build an ark. Well, what is an ark? He had no idea because there was no ark ever built before because there was rain. Well, what is rain? Because there was no rain before, but Noah was led by God. He was led by the Spirit of God to build an ark ahead of a storm. He did face some even social storms, right? Because people looked at him and they thought he was crazy. Like, what are you doing? What are you building? I mean, it wasn't some small thing that he could hide. This thing was huge, right? And so people thought he was crazy. He faced a social external storm. And and when it actually rained, right, and Noah and his family and the animals were in the ark, there were people that were dying around him. But the Lord kept him and his family safe and secure. They could rest in the midst of the storm, right? If you are, if you are in the ark, right, it's, you don't have to do anything. The storm is going and you don't have to tread water. You're just remaining in the ark, right? You just remain you just abide in the ark of god god prepared noah ahead of the storm so he could be saved so he could be rested so he could be at peace he heeded what god told him before the storm so that he could be ready for the storm and i share this with you because god could be preparing you for another storm in your life but maybe we're not paying attention where maybe we are not allowing jesus to teach us so that we can rest when the storms come our way will you be open to god if he instructs you to do something will you be open will you obey him even when it doesn't make sense it could be possibly preparation for the storm ahead which leads us to truth number three which is let the holy spirit guide you let the holy spirit guide you sometimes it's so easy to rely on our own understanding i'm guilty of that sometimes we think our idea is better than god's idea like let me tell you how it's done god because this plan it's a good plan <laughs> but the Bible says that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. And we can make things so complicated at times. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm still learning this. Um, sometimes I can be so hard-headed. You can ask Pastor Dave. Sometimes I can be so stubborn, so hard-headed. But Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. But acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will make your path straight. There have been many times I did not let the Holy Spirit guide me. And boy, let me talk, let me say it caused a lot of stress and a lot of unrest and a lot of interruption to peace. <laughs> Can you relate? But praise God, there have also been times where the Holy Spirit has led me and I have heeded the Holy Spirit even when it didn't make sense. And even when I reflect upon this, I'm amazed because again, it was his idea. It wasn't my idea. Um, so just to give you some examples, um, I think I mentioned this to you guys before, you know, but if I didn't, if I didn't um, step down from my last job or working at the previous church I was working at, God wouldn't have opened up 
or I wouldn't have had the time or space when the door opened up at Four Seasons Resort, right? It's like I had to let go in order to embrace what God had in front of me. But at this stage here, I had no idea what was on the other side of that. I had to trust him even when it didn't make sense. So even also too, I felt like in 2019 that God was saying, I want you to learn. And this was while I was sick. So I, I was like feeling horrible, at, but horrible at the time, but I could watch videos, right? So I felt like he was saying, learn how to do these things online. And lo and behold, who would have known a year later that the pandemic had happened, but now I was able to learn or had the knowledge, some starting knowledge of how we as a church could go online. Was that not preparation for a storm? When I look back, I believe it is. And it, it alleviated some stress from having to learn something like that when the pandemic hit, right? Um, also too, the beginning of this year, I specifically heard the Lord to say, you need, a, you need to stop meeting with these certain people or stop having these certain meetings or even physical things in our house that you need to get rid of these things. You need to lighten the load. And the feeling that I had was in case I needed to do a quick pivot, a quick change, that these things wouldn't weigh me down. So I did do that. And I think one of the things was I didn't commit to doing um, in-person painting workshops. And so because of that, um, when our in-laws, if you're watching, love you mom and dad and grandma if you're watching, it, um, it afforded us the time and availability when they were battling COVID earlier this year. If I did not heed the Holy Spirit and just went ahead because I thought it would be cool. No, I think it's cool if I go and do this. I would have not been available. And, and same with David. If he took on um, jobs at that time and made these commitments, he wouldn't have been able to uh be there to help our in-laws um, and uh, grandma while they're battling COVID. And I look at that and I'm like, wow, God is so good and he loves them so much. And, um, and that was also rest in the time of a storm, right? That was preparation because can you imagine how much more stress that would have been if, you know, my in-laws and our grandma were going through this and we we were working at the time and we made certain commitments that it would have put us in a really hard situation i mean you know of course they are important to us that we probably would say hey we need to come out of these commitments but that would have caused hardship for the people that we've made these commitments to right and so um heed the holy spirit right and even this time too, as I was uh, reminiscing and just thinking like, Lord, you know, have there been these times where you, you've given me instruction that didn't make sense, but when I, under, when I followed, I could see after what had happened that it was because of you, that you were, you were protecting me, that you were giving me grace. And so there was even a time when I was driving on the freeway and there was this big truck that had all of those like semi truck tires on there. And I remember hearing the Holy Spirit say, move into the next lane, like right now. So I was just like, whoa. So I moved into the next lane. And shortly after that, I just saw all those tires fall off of that truck. So if I was behind that truck, those tires would have crashed into the vehicle I was driving. So thanks be to God. And, um, oh, I want to share one more story, which was my friend Sharon and her husband, before she became a, uh, an artist, her and her husband were paramedics, right? So she used to drive the ambulance um, when there were emergencies. And her and her husband, they just, they just got saved recently. This was years ago, but they were on vacation on the mainland. And you know how the highways there, right? They could just go for miles before you see anything, right? So they're, they're on this long highway, nothing really on the side. And she said she heard the Holy Spirit say to her, you need to take that next turn at that restaurant. You need to go there right now. And she saw this restaurant coming up um, on the side. And so she just whipped the car, 
to turn in there. Well, her husband, who was in the passenger seat, was saying, what are you doing? Like, what are, what are you doing? Why are we stopping here? Because they had already made plans to go and eat someplace else. So he knew this was not the destination which they intended to go. And she said, I'm not sure, but I heard God say to turn here right now. So that's what I'm doing. Well, they get out of their vehicle and they see this car, I think, or I should say a truck with a trailer in the back with hay on it. And there's parents with children and they are just freaking out and they're saying, what's going on? <clears throat> Excuse me. So they find out that one of the children had choked on something and was not breathing. Well, because they were paramedics, they knew exactly what to do and they were able to dislodge whatever was blocking this child from breathing. They were also able to do CPR after after um, it got dislodged and, the, and then the child was able to breathe. OK, so I, I'm just like, whoa. And she said that just marked her so much because of the timing of that. If it was if she delayed or if, if there if she said, ah, you know, I'm not going to listen to you, Holy Spirit. I mean, she was just thinking about that, like, oh, my goodness, you know, what was something that came naturally for them was supernatural for these people here at this restaurant with their child. And I'm when she told me that, it reminded me also of Lee Strobel because he wrote The Case for Christ um, because a similar situation happened to him and his daughter where she was choking on something and someone was able to come there and was a Christian that saved his daughter's life. And so we don't understand sometimes when the Holy Spirit is prompting us, but it could be literally to save someone's life. You know, it could be something as drastic as that. It could be something small in, in just alleviating stress in your life, but it could be even something extreme as that to save someone else's life. So in Galatians 5, 16, it says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Verse 17, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you're not free to carry out your good intentions. Verse 18, but when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. So let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. There's times that your sinful nature, our flesh, does not want to do things, right? And But when we heed to the Holy Spirit, it always leads to life. And so in closing, I want to recap these truths to you again, okay? So truth number one is we have already been set free. Jesus paid for our sins, our sicknesses, uh, death. We're no longer slaves to those things. They need to bow to the name of Jesus. And truth number two is let Jesus teach us for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And truth number three, let the Holy Spirit lead you. He will lead us to all truth. He will comfort us. He will empower us. And some of us may get frustrated. Some of us may get frustrated right now because you're looking for something specific, which only you and Jesus need to spend time and have this conversation about because the way that I rest is not the same way you may find rest, right? Some people may get rest by, I don't know, skydiving or like going surfing, whereas other people may find rest by reading a book at home, right? So the way that we rest may be different. Um, and uh, so that's something that you can ask the Lord about. So um, a lot of times God won't give you these cookie, court, cookie cutter answers for some things because you are so unique. And sometimes I think as Christians, we can get stuck because we look at a pastor and we think, oh, okay, because they do it like that, why isn't it working for me? You know, why don't I experience peace? Well, you will probably relate. God relates to you probably very different than he relates to me, right? Those of you that are parents, you know, you love your kids. Um, you love your children, but you love them in different ways, right? Because not all of them are, you're not going to relate to them all the same way because they're not robots, right? They have different likes. They have different ways they receive love, right? So 
in that sense, you can't cookie cutter it. It's something unique. Your relationship with God is so special and so unique. So have you come today with burdens? You know, do you feel at unrest? Are you facing a storm, whether it's something actual physical storm or maybe a spiritual storm or, um, you know, relationship storm or some kind of storm? Well, I just want to encourage you that Jesus is here with you and he, he is inviting. He wants to be with you in the midst of the storm and he promises that he will never leave you or forsake you. He is the one that where the winds and the waves will obey. And he is the one who said that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. So you can know and trust that he will get you to the other side. He will get you to the other side of the storm. And that's the other thing. The storms do not always last. They always pass. And the light of God, just like the sunshine that comes out through the storm, we may not always see that God is there, but he is there and the storms will pass. And so it says in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. What do you need? Do you need financial help? Do you need peace? What is it that you need? He is wanting to know and thank him for all he has done. Thankfulness is such a powerful, powerful thing because it can help us to have a proper perspective, right? When we get the proper perspective, then we're not offended. If we get the proper perspective, then we have hope. If we have the proper perspective, then we know that God loves us, right? We don't let fear rule us. So thank him for all he has done. And in verse seven, then, then, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says to cast all your cares to him, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. God wants you to give him your concerns. The difference between meditation and worry is our focus. What are we focusing on? Are we focusing on our worries, our fears, what's not, hap what's not happening? Or are we focusing on the beautiful face of Jesus and all of his promises and his possibilities? It says in Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And in other versions, it also says, whose minds are stayed upon you. May you feel like, maybe you might feel like today that you're swimming in that flood, you know, like when Noah's Ark was happening. Maybe you feel like you're outside of that Ark and you're, you're treading water and you're tired. You're tired of treading water. You're tired of trying it on your way. You've been going, but the currents of life have just been pushing you away or the winds of, the, of life have just been tiring you out. And God is inviting you to come into his ark, his ark of safety, his ark where there is life, where there is rest and where there is peace. And all you need to do is to take his hand and to say, I want to come into your ark, Lord God. I want your life to be, be my life. I want to invite you into my life. I want to surrender all I have into your ark, into your life. And and this means that you have to, you can stop punishing yourself you can stop striving you can stop trying to be someone that you're not this means that you don't have to beat yourself up anymore because of false expectations that you put on yourself because Jesus paid for it all and when he paid what Jesus paid for he paid for in full and he's going to get what he paid for and God is inviting you he's inviting you to come so if you could uh, close your eyes and bow your heads and just hitchhike along with my prayer. Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. And I thank you for inviting me into your ark, Lord, because I'm tired from treading water in the flood of life, in these storms of life that I've been facing. I've been trying it on my own and it's not working. And so I surrender my life to you. I surrender my heart to you. I give you my heart. And I trust in you. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. 
I give you my life. Help me to follow you with everything I am in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Praise the Lord. If you've given your life to Jesus, would you please email us? Because that is something surely to celebrate. We want to help you in your next steps in your relationship with the Lord. And I know that this past year, right, as this is the last Sunday of 2021, can you believe it? That there's been many challenges that we face. And I feel like the Lord is saying, there's still going to be challenges up ahead in 2022 but he wants us to be prepared for the storms and so he's inviting you to come and rest in him and so i have some questions um, that you can ask the lord when you spend time with him you can also discuss these in your small group time so your assignment is to um, ask the lord number one what season am i heading into Am I heading into a winter, spring, summer, or fall season? So just as we have physical seasons, we also have spiritual seasons. So sometimes in a winter season, it may be God may be calling you for a time of rest. In a spring season, it may be a time of growth and birthing things and new things. Um, and summer may also be a time of rest or refreshment. Um, fall could also be a time of harvesting right where there's a lot of miracles happening in your life there's a lot of people coming to the Lord it's a it's a very busy time a busy season so ask the Lord what season am I heading into and the second question is what is the one thing that you want me to focus on in 2022 and I'll just give you a little sneak thing for what the Lord has been putting on my heart for New Hope Aloha Paul Ole. He, um, he's been putting identity as a huge part. That that is something we need to focus on personally and as a church. And then um, number three, what do I need to leave behind because I won't need this in this next season. So remember how I mentioned in the beginning of this year, there were certain meetings that I was to stop. There were certain things I was to donate or give away, right? Are there things that have served you in this past season, but you don't need it anymore because God wants to make room for the new things he has for you in this next season, right? Just like winter time, right? You got these warm clothes, but you don't need those warm clothes if you're heading into a summer season, right? So what do I need to leave behind um, as I head into this next season. And number four is what resources are available to me in this next season? So resources could be financial, like monetary kind of um, resource. It could be people resources, technology, actual physical things. So what resources, it could be training or something like that to help build your capacity for what God is preparing you for. So what resources are available to me in this next season to prepare me for what is the next thing you have for me okay so pray for those things and congratulations again to those of you who gave your life to the lord all of heaven is rejoicing and having a party over you so god bless you and we'll see you next year in 2022 god bless you